If you hopping on, drop a comment below. Let me know you tuned in. Is that Muhammad? If you hopping on, let me know you tuning in. So yeah, pretty much on this live stream today, I'm actually gonna talk about the six key elements to get into the 1%. The six key elements to get into the 1%. So if you ever desire to get into the top 1% when it comes to this country that we're in called the United States of America, when it comes to income when it comes to wealth when it comes to lifestyle as a whole i'm actually share with you what it takes to get into the top one percent of this country what i've discovered over several years since i've been fortunate enough to transform my life and help many other people do the same thing welcome patricia i see you looking <laughs> I see you looking. If you hopping on, drop a comment below. Let me know you tuned in. Today I'm going to talk about the six key elements to get into the 1%. If you desire to get into the 1%, if you're not already in the 1%, you desire to get into the 1%. When it comes to income, when it comes to creating wealth when it comes to lifestyle as a whole, then this is definitely the live stream you want to tune into. And also feel free to share this live stream around with anyone else you feel could benefit. I'm actually reporting live from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm out here with my guy, Antonio Millhouse, social media director of the Rise of 1%, Instagram specialist. Checking in. So if you're just tuning in, of course you know, we actually have a company called The Rise of the 1%. And that's one of our primary goals is to assist many individuals, even business owners, to get into the top 1% of their industry, to even the top 1% in terms of income, wealth, lifestyle, in the country and eventually the world. So today I actually wanted to go live, not necessarily just talking so much about marketing. I know we talk a lot about marketing all the time, being that we specialize in digital marketing. I wanted to talk a little bit about the six key elements to getting into the 1%. And what I've discovered from working alongside a lot of people that are already a part of the 1% to being mentored by people that are part of the 1% to myself, fortunately, getting into the 1% as well. And the 1% is about income, it's about wealth, it's also about lifestyle as well. If you all didn't know, to get into the top 1%, and we'll just talk about income very quickly, when it comes to the U.S. population, you only have to be earning $350,000 plus a year. That's it. Right? Some people think you got to be making millions of dollars or billions of dollars to be into the top 1%. That's absolutely not true. The 1% of what? The 1% of income earners, the 1% of people that control all the wealth of the entire U.S. population and people that just live the 1% lifestyle as a whole. They don't live like the 99% does. That's what the 1% is. Patricia? You say that's a big ticket to fill. <laughs> all right. I'm going to share with you how it's not as difficult as you may think it is. All right, because I've been fortunate enough, like I say, to not only change my life over these last close to three years, but I've also 
assisted many other individuals over the years in doing the same thing. So you want to definitely get a pen and pad and take some copious notes. All right. The first one, the first thing is you have to tap into your spirituality. That's the first thing. Okay. That's the first thing. That's the first thing. And when I say spirituality, I'm not talking about religion. Right? I'm talking about your actual spiritual being, the higher power. Right? And whoever that may be for you, whoever you may pray to, what have you. But that is the first thing. Because that's one of the things that I know had a big impact on my life changing uh, some years ago. When I committed my life to tapping more into the source, the higher power. And for me, that was definitely picking up the Bible. Uh, for me, that's the book that I've studied. Um, and then, of course, attending church, getting around uh, more people as well that was getting their spirituality intact on a consistently consistent basis as well. Right? So that's the first thing. And I'm not going to go a whole lot in detail on spirituality on this live stream. I'm not a pastor, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and I'm not a Bible scholar. I'm still a work in progress. But at the end of the day, though, I know that's one of the key things that helped myself and many other successful entrepreneurs or business owners and people that are part of the 1%. I know they all tap into their spirituality at a high level, right? Whoever they pray to. Okay, so that's the first thing. Because for myself, and this is something you want to write down as well, people in the 1% and very successful people, they all have morning rituals. You want to write that down? They all have morning, we call it success rituals. Right? So they don't just get up in the morning and just go at their day. They don't get up in the morning and check Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat. Right? They don't get up and check text messages and emails they have a morning success ritual where they focus on their self for at least the first hour of the day for at least the first hour of the day so when I get out of my bed in the morning the first thing I do is thank the high power for allowing me to see another day because it was some people that didn't see another day right that's the first thing I do and then I drop to my knees and I pray before I do anything else in the morning. Right? That's before I even go brush my teeth in the morning. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Just getting up. So Patricia says, the how do we justify number one as being a factor if you're not a master of what you do? I want to make sure I understand your question. How do you justify number one as being a factor if you're not a master of what you do. If you're number one in whatever you do, you are a master. Mm. You've mastered your craft. How can you label yourself number one and you have not mastered your craft? Whatever that may be. Whatever that may be. When you think of every industry, Every industry, it's not even just business. You think of sports, you think of music, you may think of movies, you may think of people that have became doctors, lawyers, whatever the case may be. Every profession, if they're rated number one, that means they've mastered what they do. They're the best at what they do. They're the GOATs, right? A lot of people call it the greatest of all time. And when I'm talking about number one, I'm just talking about the top 1% when it comes to this U.S. population, when it comes to income, when it comes to the people that control the wealth, and when it comes to people, like I said, that live the 1% lifestyle. They don't live like everyone else lives. So like I just said, part of what the 1% does, they don't just get up in the morning and just go at their day or get up at the, in the morning and just go to work or get up in the morning and the first thing they do is check email, check text messages, check Instagram, check Facebook. They get up in the morning with some type of morning success ritual. 
And what I was sharing with you is most people that I know as well that are within the top 1% of the U.S. population, they're top, tapped into their spirituality at a high level, right? No matter who they're praying to. And like I said, it's not about religion. They're just very spiritual in some form of fashion, right? Whether you know it or not. So I was sharing with you my morning success ritual and what I've shared with many of my students who have went on to generate thousands to tens of thousands of dollars in their businesses. A lot of them model the success ritual that I do as well is I get up every single morning and I get up with a sense of gratitude, thanking the higher power, dropping to my knees, praying. Then I go and groom myself and then I go straight to the gym, which is I'm going to talk about that in a second, which is health. That's, just, that's one of the key elements as well. Does that make sense? Tara says, hello. Hey, Tara, how you doing? We all have God given inside of ourselves. Absolutely, Antonio. A God given gift inside of ourselves. Absolutely. And it's up to us to tap into it, right? So that's the first key element. Spirituality is real heavy. The second key element is relationships. Relationships with your family. Relationships with your friends. Okay? And I'm not going to say in all my years of being an entrepreneurship, I'm not going to say that I've always had the best relationships with all of my family over all the years of me being in business. But I can say when I have had great relationships with them and everyone's getting along, everyone's loving each other, right? I've always performed better in my business career and in entrepreneurship, right? So having great relationship with family, friends, being able to spend time with your family and friends and stuff at times is definitely as well a key element to being a part of the top 1%. Now, here's the thing here that I do want you to understand if you're going to build big entrepreneurship and business, though. Yes, you do want to spend time with family and friends, right? You don't want to neglect your family and friends for your business, okay? People that really love you. But at the same time, there's no such thing as balance when it comes to entrepreneurship. Somebody would have write that down. You could go ask several millionaires, even billionaires. They would tell you the same thing. There's no such thing as balance. You have to make your family and friends a part of this new lifestyle that you have when it comes to entrepreneurship. There's no such thing as balance when you're building a business. You have to make a lot of sacrifices, a lot of short-term sacrifices for long-term gain. It's been many times over these years of me being an entrepreneur, I have not made all the family functions. I have not been able to make all the outings with all my friends at times, especially in the beginning stages of me building and growing, you have to make sacrifices. Now, over time, once you start to create whatever success looks like for you and you start to generate the income that you're looking to generate and you start to get the time freedom that you have been working so hard for, then yes, you can spend time with family and friends. But in the beginning stages, when you're attempting to grow something big, you got a grand vision and you're going for something that most other people are not going out for and probably a lot of your family and friends are not going for, guess what? You have to make those sacrifices. But like I say, don't just completely neglect your family and friend relationships to become successful, if that makes sense. So that's the second key element. Who's getting value? If you're getting value, type, you're getting value, please. <laughs> and show some love. So Antonio says, I honestly cannot do nothing without the higher power. And that's been my blueprint to success. Absolutely. Antonio is very big on his spirituality. Terry says, it makes great sense. Relationships over revenue. Absolutely. And yes, relationships even outside of your family and friends, constantly networking and meeting new people. That's also part of becoming part of the 1% because your network is your net worth. So the people that you spend the most time with, that's usually how you are, right? So they say if you spend 
your time with five wealthy people, you most likely become wealthy. You spend your time with five people not talking about nothing and always talking about how we not going to be successful and want to drink beer every day and crack jokes and think that life is just a complete game, then guess what? You'll end up like them. Hang around five millionaires, you'll become the sixth. Hang around five billionaires, you'll become the sixth. So it's the law of association. All right? So, yes, relationships are very key. Third, third is health. And some people don't want to hear this. <laughs> some people see me working out all the time, and I think they be feeling some type of way or something. <laughs> right? they like, man, Gerald always working out, man. I ain't been in the gym in months. Right? Well, I'm going to tell you this. Health is wealth. What does it do you any good to make a whole lot of money, but you're not here to enjoy it? Or you're on a hospital bed? Right? What does that do for you? It doesn't do anything for you. So with that being said, health is very important. Not only that, I typically like to work out early in the mornings and I train a lot of my students and clients to do the same thing is start your day off with some form of workout. It gets your blood flowing. It wakes you up early in the morning. It's a dunning task. It's a task most of us don't want to do. So you knock that task out first. That way you don't procrastinate on it and keep putting it off. And then not only that, by you tackling such a task that's not as easy for most people in the morning, guess what? It sets you up to run through any other barriers or obstacles or challenges throughout the rest of your day because you just hit one of the hardest tasks for your day. So that's why it's good to work out early in the morning and work out consistently at least three to five times a week. That's a key characteristic of the top 1%. If you do your study and your research, you'll see the same thing. Most of them have it in their morning success ritual. Workout. Health is very important. All right? So that's three. Okay? I know it's a little, the light's going down a little bit. All right? So four. All right? Four is mindset personal growth okay that would be number four mindset personal growth people within the top one percent they work on themselves every day they work on their mind every single day they're growing their mind every day they're heavy on personal development the moment you stop growing is the moment you stop dying so that's something that started dying so that's something that should be in your morning success ritual as well is some form of personal development every single morning. Reading 10 pages of some type of personal development book. There's many personal development books and self-help books out there. right? I'm not going to go through a whole list of them, but it's many of them. Okay, many of them, many of them. If you just go to Amazon.com and you go search in the category of personal development, you'll find plenty of books on it. If you go to Barnes and Nobles, go to the self-help or the personal development section, you'll find plenty of books for that. But that's one of the key characteristics of the 1%. They're always learning. They're always growing. They completely get rid of ego, believing they know everything. You got Warren Buffett, who still reads eight hours a day. He's a multi-billionaire. He won't even spend all his money with his time on this earth. And he still reads eight hours a day. And when it comes to this entire U.S. population, most people, the majority of people, read an average of two books a year. And you wonder <laughs> why they're not in the 1%. So you have to be constantly learning and growing. All right? Mindset is key. Strengthening your mind. Number five, 
You got to take action. <clears throat> That's number five. You got to put in the work. Right? You got to put in the work. That's number five. A lot of people don't like to hear that part. A lot of people just want to stay in learning mode. Or they're stuck in terms of procrastination of taking action on the things they need to do to be successful. But majority of those, as a matter of fact, most of those that are in the 1% are entrepreneurs and business owners. So every day, you have to be taking the necessary steps to grow your business. What that may be. That may be prospecting for new customers and clients. Reaching out to new business in whichever fashion you may do that in. Social media, picking up the phone, meeting them in person. What other ways that may be? It may be running advertisements online to generate new business on a day-to-day -day basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis. Putting out content online consistently to generate new leads, new customers, new clients. And then, of course, servicing your customers and clients. You got to do the work. And number six, you got to have mentorship and you got to be constantly learning new stuff in reference to your craft. That's number six. Mentorship, coaches, investing in books, investing in courses. Investors in coaches and masterminds and going to events and conferences to continuously sharpen your acts in reference to getting better and better and better at your skill set. That's how you get into the top 1%. So once again, the six key elements to get into the 1%. Number one, you got to tap into your spirituality. Number two, you got to keep solid relationships with family, friends, and consistently build your network up as well with more and more powerful people around you and smart people around you. Number three, you got to have your health intact. Make sure you're consistently working on your health. Number four, you got to constantly be growing your mind, personal development, personal growth. Number five, you got to take action. You got to do the work. You got to constantly be implementing and taking action to grow your empire every day and serve and impact as many people as you can. And number six, you need to have mentorship and you constantly need to be learning more and more and more stuff around your skill set to sharpen your ass. Hope you all got a lot of value out of that. If you did, feel free to share this live stream around with anyone else you feel could benefit. Drop a comment below if you got any type of value, your biggest key takeaways, or if you got any questions for me. If you need any assistance with, from me in any form or fashion, in terms of mentorship, coaching, if you're looking to scale your business to six figures and above to get into that top 1%, you need assistance with marketing, lead generation, customer and client acquisition online. Feel free to shoot me a private message. With that said, got to get ready to do a couple of more things for our day. If you're watching the replay, hashtag replay at the bottom. Also, feel free to share your takeaways. And if you got any questions, drop them below. And if you need assistance, feel free to shoot me a private message as well. With that said, I'm going to go on and chime off. Y'all have a phenomenal day on purpose.